All right, brothers and sisters out there, Shalom, everybody. All praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakak, Kodash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, Shalom to the hopefully elect. All right, and this lesson is entitled Beware of Wickedness. It will alter your understanding. Okay, and that scripture is going to come from the Apocrypha, and we will get around to reading it, Lord willing. All right, just another uh, opportunity to bring out some truth. Going to another lesson, you know, live. I'm in, a, I'm in this spot that I really like. I like this spot. And what I notice over the years is different videos that you make, you get a different vibration. For example, whenever I do a video like this, it's more studious. It feels like a, you know, like a classroom setting, you know, but it's outside. It'd be, you know, feel the sunlight, experience some nature. Inside the house is also like a classroom setting on the uh, live stream on the laptop. But then when I do a video of a walk and talk or something else, it has a little bit different vibe. You know what I mean? Videos you do on the, on the, uh, on the phone is a little bit different too. But all these are different ways. You know, even like with the in-transit. The in-transit video is something I'm probably going to revisit soon, Lord willing. So I just really enjoy doing in-transit videos. You know what I mean? But anyway, all about edification. As always, how about you have a sharp rock of thumb to all you brothers and sisters out there. And Lord willing, this is edifying. So again, the lesson is entitled beware of wickedness it will alter your understanding okay and that's part you know and that's got a lot to do with the most high told us to repent and turn away from these wicked works because the most high don't deal with wicked people man okay there's a scripture where king david says i will not know a wicked person so if you're doing wickedness and you're trying to understand the truth you ain't gonna get the full understanding of these scriptures it's just not gonna work you can't be self-willed you can't be being a demon you know you can't be being a person of the world and then think the most high gonna deal with you okay so just bear with me here as we get into it now. Now, I got inspired to do this lesson because I actually, the, the lesson I was doing the other day dealing with this, uh, it was entitled, it was a live stream. It was entitled, this, uh, this is a toxic world with toxic people. I believe is what it was entitled, why die with them, right? And I had scriptures actually left over that I didn't read in that lesson because I actually had to shut it down sooner than I wanted to because I had, you know, I was waiting on something and actually, uh, it came up, so I had to go ahead on and end that lesson and dip, but I had a few scriptures left. So I just kept those same scriptures and changed the name. So I'm going to read, I'm going to start at John chapter 8, right? And this is the Lord Yahweh Shah speaking, All right? This is John 8, <clears throat> and I'm going to go to verse, I'll just jump in here in this story. This is uh, John 8 and verse 20. It says, these words... Spake Yahweh shot in the treasury, because he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. And I didn't ask brothers, but how's the uh, reception? Is the sound good? Is the feed good? Lord willing, everything is going good. I mean, I checked myself, but it looked good on my end. But how's it look on y'all's end over there? Lord willing, it's good. Just check that before we uh, move on. Looking good. How's the feed over there, brother? Okay, brother said it's great. Good stuff, good stuff. All right. All right, so going back to it, John 8 and 20 again. These words spake Yahweh shot in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. Then said Yahweh shot unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whither I go, ye cannot come. Then said the Jews, will he kill himself because he's, he saith, whither I go, ye cannot come. And he said unto them, ye are from beneath, I am from above. Right? Ye are from beneath, I am from above, ye are of this world, I am not of this world. We say the same thing to these, pe same thing to these people now. Now, not from a proud standpoint, just from the standpoint of the Lord has taught us. He dealt with us. You know, we got uh, apostles and elders and uh elder bishops and you know big brothers and whatnot teaching us the ways of truth and we know that it's the truth our souls and the way that uh we we've, we've, we've been able to change you know trying to be in a right of a righteous nature proves that this is the truth you didn't you didn't have anything before this that helped you stop smoking weed right help you stop being a demon help you stop you know if you were stealing boosting clothes being a gangster whatever you were doing selling dope None of the things in the world could ever stop you from doing that. But when you find this truth, you were able to stop. Christianity couldn't even stop you from smoking cigarettes. People in the church now are still bound 
with them sins that they got. So we know that this is the truth. He says, uh, Salaki, and he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. And the spirit of Yahweh don't resonate with the spirit of the world. In his time, he was he was saying it directly to them, but now his Holy Spirit is here instead of him, and is in these men teaching this truth. Verse 24 says, I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins, for if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. And the same sentiment goes out of these people now. You don't have to accept us as the prophets. You don't have to believe that we're the men of the Lord. You don't have to believe that our apostles and elders were sent by the Most High to teach us all, to raise up the elect. You don't have to believe it. Doesn't mean it's not true. Romans 3 and 3, right? What if some did not believe? If a brother want to put it up, 3 and 4, Romans 3 and 3 through verse through verse 4. Which says, Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Yahweh shall say unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true. And I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. And you know, and that's the point. You know, we speak to the world the things we heard in the spirit. We've been confirmed with by the spirit of truth. So going back to the point, he said, ye are of this world, I am not of this world. That's the overall point. He said to them, ye are from beneath, I am from above. You're like earthly individuals. You go after the ways of this society, after the ways of these people. And we go, you know, as we've been seeing over and over there, the ways of this society is all wickedness, man. Don't, don't mean to keep on saying the same thing over and over, but I mean, that's what the examples that we got. This world is complete wickedness, man. This society is toxic the people are toxic the food is toxic the women are toxic right the pastimes are wicked evil you see these actors on tv you can't even damn near find a show that you like because every time you find a show that you like and you watch it they'll put homosexuality right in your damn face make it push the envelope um the the show power that was a pretty good dog on the show you know i i, I kind of like it you know what I'm saying? i mean of course it's, it's of this world don't get me wrong it's entertaining let me say it like this it's an entertaining show and you know, when you're watching Ghost and Tommy on Power, you know, they had a certain masculine thing. They was gangsters, man. And then they had to kill Ghost off, right? Then what's going on on the show now? They, they didn't have a whole lot of homosexuality in that thing. But now on the new, what is it, book two? You know, with, with Tariq, little badass in college, what they did just do to, uh, not this last episode last night, but the one before that, they had two women in the, on the kissing, man. So they, they always constantly messing up something, you know, with the agenda of this society. But, you know, that, that shows you that this world is... is for lack of a better term, it's effed up. I say it like that. Now it goes on, you are, you are from beneath, I am from above. You are of this world, now I am not of this world. So our Lord, Yahweh Shah's spirit is not of the world. This is uh, John 18 and 36, just to get a point out of it. And I hit the comment board as well. Um, John 18 and 33. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Yahweh Shai and said unto him, Art thou king of the Jews? Yahweh Shai answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself? Did others tell it thee of me? He said, You saying it of your own, or did other people tell you that? That I said, you know, that I'm the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Pilate said, Am I one of y'all? Hell no. He said, Your own people delivered you to me. Yahweh shall answer, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then will my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from thence. And that's the point. Yahweh shall say, this kingdom is not of this world. We can't be of this worldly fashion. You know, I used to hear people say, you know, that such and such an individual is worldly. Meanwhile, they was worldly their own selves, man. That's what Christianity offers you. A bunch of contradictions, right? Hypocrisy. Now, I want to get into the subject of the matter. Now we got enough brothers and sisters in there. That was just opening scripture that I was reading. Still great. Let's see here. Uh, yep, an alphabet stuff. Yep, absolutely. This is uh, uh, Shalom Israel 777, John 15 and 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. You can't go past these words just like they don't mean nothing. The most high ordained, just like you talk about the wicked individuals. I think it's in Peter where it talks about certain individuals that were ordained to this condemnation they were predestined for that kind of you you got people that are predestined for destruction we know that but if you try to tell the people of the world that they won't believe oh no god wouldn't do that yeah he would he's an all most high is not flesh man 
He's spirit. He's all righteous. He ain't ready to sit there and quibble over a few souls that he could easily create. No, he made you to be damn wicked, man. So he's going to destroy you for being wicked. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. The elect have been ordained, right, for times of old, because it says it in the scriptures, man. We've been predestined, Lord willing. I say we, tentatively. We've been predestined to walk after the ways. Can a brother give uh, Romans 8, 29? Well, you know what? I'll go there and read it. Yeah, I'll go there and just read it, bring it up. Um, just hold tight. But that's a great scripture from the brother. I'll finish it off. But, uh, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you, Sakari. You got to say it in the name of the, of the Son, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, in the name of the Savior. If you don't want to do it, then don't do it. Whoever it is out there, a bunch of demons. Now, going to the scripture that I was talking about, show me what the brother put up is correct. You've been ordained. The elect have been ordained before of old. Right? This is Romans. Hold on, brothers. In the scripture, I want to, uh, oh, wrong one. Romans 8, verse 29. I'll just go to the point. It says, verse 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Most High, to them that are, who are called according to His purpose. It's all about the Lord. He must increase, we must decrease, right? To, the, to our, our uh, Hebrew Israelite brothers who want to be rappers. This ain't about you no more. This ain't about your style, your dope flow, okay? <laughs> You don't get the glory on this side. You saw the way he spit that verse? Nope. Didn't care about it. Verse uh, 28 again. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love the most high. To them who are called according to his purpose. What you got against rap? I, I don't have anything against rap. It's just not part of the ministry. Right? I love the ministry of the most high. Anything that's going to pollute it, I'm going to call it out. You can get mad all you want to because you found a Negro way to fit into the truth. We don't give a shit. The most I don't give a shit. You can't show us anywhere where songs help convert anyone. It's never going to happen. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love the most high, to them who are called according to his purpose. Listen, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed. When you be conformed to something, you're going to be patterned, fashioned after that thing, not the other way around. The truth is not going to stretch to fit you. Okay? It's just not going to happen. You have to stretch or... You have to be changed. You have to be a new creation. And that's why we're going into the lesson. Wickedness will, will alter your understanding, man. It's in the scripts. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. Christians hate that word. It takes away you. It takes away your will. Because there's no you when it comes to the, what, what the Lord is doing. He's the one doing it. It's his will. Again, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. The son ain't going to conform to your ways. The truth is not going to be in the court of your will. It's about what the Lord is doing. That he might be the firstborn among, amongst many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. You see? So this is all according to what the Lord is doing. And he predestinated spirits to be in a righteous sense. To come after and be conformed to the image of his son. And others he can he uh predestinated to be rotten ass niggas, man. To be rotten individuals, to be terrible examples and great examples at the same time of what not to do. And we have to accept it. And we do. Let's see what brothers got on the comment board real quick. This is Jim and Spiritual Temple 2, 2 Peter 2 and 12. But these is natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed. To be taken and destroyed. Not made to be great, then it fell off some kind of way. Lord. But these is natural beasts. I'm a savage. Yeah, you are. You're a savage and a damn beast. But these is natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed. Speak evil of the things that they understand not. And shall utterly perish in their own corruption. That's right. They was made to be taken and destroyed. They're just playing that role out. They're just fulfilling the lot. And a lot will fulfill that lot. <laughs> Forgive me. Couldn't help it. So that's a great scripture. This is Jim and Saints of the Most High. Two and four. Take that number, O Zion, and shut up those of thine that are clothed in white. There's a number, a particular group, and we don't know the number. It's an innumerable multitude. 
What you think? What time say? <laughs> this guy teaches of truth. Teaches of God, which he's been absentee for a long time now. We knew you was a demon. This dude said the innumerable multitude was 144,000. How? How the innumerable multitude, which means cannot be numbered, but you can say how many that it is. <laughs> you know, he was eating paint chips as a kid. Second, there's two and forty again. Take that number, O Zion, and shut up those of thine that are clothed in white, which have fulfilled the law of the Lord. See that? They fulfilled it. Why? Because it was put in their spirit to do so. The number of thy children whom thou longest for is fulfilled. Beseech the power of the Lord that thy people, which have been called from the beginning, whoo, may be hallowed. Called from the beginning, man. And we had no idea, you know, in our lives early on that we would be in this walk now, but we couldn't be more thrilled. As we see the end drawing close, right? This is Yawana uh, 144 by Ephesians 1 and 4. According as he had chosen us in him before, he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him alone. Yahweh Shai, that guy said my mama was fat without blame before the throne and before the Lamb, as Revelation 14 says. There's going to be a group that's going to be without blame. So as Elder Yashawama says often from time to time that you ain't going to be able to go to the Lord and accuse us. There's no ministry of let's accuse the prophets to the Lord. It's not going to work. He's going to ask you about your words, your deeds, not ours. Think about it. Back to that scripture, Ephesians 1 and 4, according as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. How did you get found without blame? Because you ain't never do nothing wrong? You never committed any sins? You never did anything worthy of death? No, it's because you have an advocate with the Father who died for the sins of his people. On this side, the elect, and overall for all of his people in the kingdom of heaven, okay? This is Toronto's hopefully elect, Matthew 22, 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. Few as in, in, as in two Two parts cut off and die. One part is going to get eternal life, right? That's the few, we, even though it's an innumerable multitude. This is Ephesians 1 and 5 again, or, or from the brother, the other, the uh, accompanying scripture, having predestinated, Salaki, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Yahweh Shah to himself. See that? That gives it to you. You are predestined and, and, and uh, brought out of this condition. By the Lord's Son, by the predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Yahweh Hamashiach to himself. So he used the Savior, and I don't mean using the name, through the, the, the uh, through the blood of the Savior. He uh, adopted us, and uh, we were able to be adopted back to the Most High, which Old Testament Israelites, they can't understand. Where he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Beautiful, beautiful stuff, man. And your brothers got awesome scriptures. I'm gonna go here now. Y'all rolling already. The spirit is on, brothers. Man, okay, hold up. So some people having some issues out of the stream, and some is not. Is it freezing for you? The spirit and belief of the truth buffering, and that's got to be Esau. Cause I done that many lessons from here before, and this shit didn't do it. Didn't do this. But hold on here. All right, hold on. This is what we'll do. More than one way. All right, hold up, brothers. Just give me a second here. We fully, we got a lot of, you know, a lot of things we can do. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk and talk it. Yeah. You know, they're going to keep complaining. They're children, man. It's all good. What we going to do? I'm walking talk back to the vehicle. And then I'll get in the vehicle. Yeah. Yeah, it, it probably is E. It probably is E, but hold on, though. Because I am under this uh, cover, so. That's always a possibility. Just hold on there, brothers. All right? Just hold tight. We'll get back to it. Hold on. I pack up my stuff here. And I'll be back to the I'll be back to the truck in a minute or so. Oh boy. 
and it's all good. No sweat. You got nothing but time. All right, so don't trip. Don't even trip. Is it better now? Is it better for everybody or is it still buffering? Because I'm going to just go ahead and go to the vehicle. It's good now? Yeah, but it, it, it could come back. Lord willing, it's good. Better now? Okay, well, if you start giving trouble again, let me know. And, let, and I'm going to do this, too. Um, Y'all, hold on. I'm going to take this case off. Because it could just be getting hot, you know? Just hold on. Let's try that. Okay. Well, Lord willing, if it, if it start getting bad again, let me know. And we'll, and I'll just move. All right? All right. Because, Lord willing, I want to get this lesson out. So anyway, going back to what we was talking about, so lock it for that interruption. All right. All right. Let me see here. Interruption. All right. All right. Okay. So the next scripture that I'll go to is, is the main one that I wanted to read anyway. Let's go to it and read it. This is where the title comes from. It's dealing with Enoch. And, it, and then, you know, it gave me the whole lesson to do. So this is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4, okay? Hold on, please. Whew. All right, so Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4, and verse, I'll start at verse 8. And we know that it's not going to say Enoch's name, but we know it's talking about. It's, it's dealing with Enoch. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 8. For, for uh, honorable age is not that which standeth in length of time. I mean, you know what? Let me start at verse 7. But though the righteous be prevented with death, yet shall he be in rest. For honorable age is not that which standeth in length of time, nor that which is, that is measured by number of years. But wisdom is the gray hair unto men, and an unspotted life is old age. Here's where it gets good. Verse 10. He pleased the Most High and was beloved of him so that living amongst sinners, he was translated. This is talking about Enoch, right? Living amongst sinners, he was translated because he wasn't a sinner. The scripture tells us in Hebrews 11. Can I go there? Let's go there real quick. If I may. If a brother beat me to it, you do. If not, I got it. Um, Hebrews 11. In verse 5, yeah, Hebrews 11 and 5 says, By faith Enoch was translated, that he should not see death and was not found, because the Most High had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased the Most High. Okay? Yep, just like Elijah, brother. So before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased the Most High. And what does the scripture say? Without faith, it's impossible to please the Most High. So we know that Enoch was a man of faith. So back in this verse, Wisdom of Solomon 4 10, he pleased the Most High and was beloved of him. So that living amongst sinners, he was translated. The Most High beamed up Elijah. He never, I mean, uh, Enoch, he never even died. Listen to this. It says, Yes, yeah, speedily he was taken away, lest that wickedness should alter his understanding and deceit beguile his soul. What does that mean? It's almost like the Most High said, you know, this is my son Enoch, right? This is my man Enoch. I'm going to go ahead and take him up here with me because if I leave him down there among the wicked people, they're going to they're gonna change the way he is. You know, not that they really could because, you you know, of course, you predestined. So it's not going to happen, but wickedness will alter your understanding because you become, and we're going to read it in other scriptures. You know, wickedness will beguile your, your soul. It will change your understanding. It says, yes, yeah, speedily he was taken away. Lest that wickedness should alter his understanding or deceit beguile his soul. For the wing of naughtiness doth obscure things that are honest, and the wandering of concupiscence doth undermine the, the, uh, doth undermine the simple mind. You be around wicked people, you become just like them. You start participating in the ways of the world, it will alter your understanding. Suddenly things that were clear to you will become all tainted and messed up. 
That's how we know the most high. When you have Jakes that are constantly watching videos and they ain't getting the understanding, more than likely it's because they were damn wicked. They being damn wicked, man. You know, we're really, from the beginning, we know that they may just not be of the elect, but it starts to show because they're just damn wicked. That's why so many Israelites are teaching false doctrine. They're teaching carnality. You know the reason why they're doing it? Because really they're just damn wicked, man. Because if, if you hear you are, if you were Israelite, and the Most High called you, and you followed his truth and sincerity and righteousness, what do we know is going to happen? He's going to, don't you have a shot to say? He'll stand at the door and knock. If any man will open unto him, he will come in and sup with you. So that means if, if he's knocking on the door and you open up in all righteousness and sincerity, the door of your mind, then you should be able to understand the truth. But so many cannot. Why? Because they damn wicked, man. And the scriptures back that up. Yes, speedily he was taken away, lest that wickedness should alter his understanding or deceit beguile his soul. See that? And beguile means what? Like being tricked. If you've been beguiled, you've been tricked. Let me see if I can look this word up just to get the, the, the right definition. Because I said, you know, it means trick. Let's see. Looking up beguile, it says charm, entertain, beguile, charm or enchant someone, sometimes in a deceptive way. As adjective, beguiling, trick someone into doing something. See that? <laughs> just like the, saint, uh, the serpent beguiled Eve. See? And it's just like that. If you start, like with King Solomon, use King Solomon as an example. That's why the Most High told us, to watch out for them heathen wives, man. Not because they're flesh. If you be, you know, just because you be with a woman of another, see so you going off. No, it's because of their gods. You start falling in love with them. Then you want to, then that, that love beguiles you. It makes you want to please them. You know, you start changing up. You start becoming like, like, uh, like my wife said, you, you'll become a switch out. <laughs> anyway, let's speedily. He, uh, yeah, speedily was he taken away, lest that wickedness should alter his understanding and deceit beguile his soul for the bewitching of naughtiness doth obscure things that are honest when something is obscured it's hidden right doth obscure things that are honest and the wandering of concupiscence doth undermine the simple mind he being made perfect in a short time fulfilled a long time for his soul pleased the lord therefore hastened he to take him away from among the wicked you see and we got to be the same way now. We Well, we ain't left yet. We ain't leaving. You can't. It's not in our power to leave, but it is in our power to depart from wickedness, to stay away from negative influences. And ain't none of us saying we're perfect. We're not saying that we do everything right, but we are trying to, as hard as we can to be separate, right? To be separate from these, these, these people of the world. I'll, I'll keep on reading. It says, This the people saw and understood it not, neither laid up, Neither laid they up this in their minds that his grace and mercy is with his saints, and he hath respect unto his chosen. See? So the most high respects his chosen. They ain't say he loves everybody, he respects everybody. No. He's dealing with one individual in that scripture, and then now who is that? The elect. In all times it was always been a chosen. That's a great scripture. I think I got it, but I'll read it now. Great scriptures. Let me see what we got on the comment board. And you you get it. The Most High told us to depart from wickedness, man. This is GMS Tazakai Yahweh, Micah 2 and 10. Arise ye and depart. Why does the Most High say that? It ain't talking about physically leaving. It's talking about depart from the, the ideas, the opinions, the philosophies, the energy. Like, like they like to say, that keep that same energy. Don't keep the same energy as the people of the world. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest because it is polluted. It shall destroy you even with the sword of destruction. Now, it might destroy you. It could destroy you. No, it will. If you let Babylon the Great and this ways that this society get its tentacles into you, it's going to destroy you. Bottom line. It's going to destroy you. No way around it. This is our Virgin Island Straight Great. Another great, great scripture. 2 Corinthians 6, 17. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. We're supposed to be of a separate mind state. And wickedness will alter your understanding. Right now, you got to hear the truth on you. You start hanging out with wicked niggas. Right? You start. That's why the Lord tells us to be separate, man. Every time you see an Israelite in the truth, try to hang around his cousins, his friends, his friends in the world, try to have one foot in the truth, one foot in the world, they always wind up. That wickedness is going to spread faster than righteousness will, man. It were, and, I, and I thought about it. It reminds you of that scene. Salakia. So it remind you of that scene. I think it's on one of the Spider-Man movies. I don't know if it's part two or part three. 
well, I think it was Carnage or Venom, that black goop that dripped on the guy and it fused with his soul and he became evil and wicked. And then uh, Peter Parker, it got on him, right? It, you know, that, that sticky tar-like goop that got on him, he was trying to get it off and it changed his whole attitude. That's what wickedness is like. That shit will get on you and it'll spread on you and it'll stick to you and then you become a damn demon, man. Right? Yeah, it was Venom, the water, brother. That's what it's like. And what did Peter Parker, he had to do something special to get that shit off of him, man. Spider-Man 3. <laughs> that's crazy when you think about it. But that, that's why I always think he was like struggling with that, that, that. It's like wickedness and sin, man. This shit is sticky and nasty. As a matter of fact, listen to this. This is how much, man, the Most High is bad like that, man. This is, uh, hold up. Yeah. Ecclesiastes 13, verse 1. Listen. He that touches pitch shall be defiled therewith. What's pitch? If you go back to, uh, in, uh, Genesis, when the Most High was dealing with Noah, he was telling him to put pitch on the ark within and without. It's like unto a sticky substance like tar, right? Let's look up the word pitch to see if it gives us anything. Yeah, listen to this. Oh, my gosh, this is fire. It says, pitch, a black or dark, vicious substance obtained as a residue in the distillation of organic materials and especially tars. Any of various bituminous substances, resin obtained from various conifers and used, often used medicinally, right? And which really, it's you know, in that sense, it's like a it's like a tar. I mean, that first definition: a black or dark, vicious, or viscous substance obtained as a residue in the distillation of organic materials and especially tar. As most I said. Take the gopher wood and pitch it within and without. It's supposed to seal the boards together. So when you read in Ecclesiastes 13 and 1, he that touches pitch shall be defiled therewith, and he that have fellowship with a proud man shall be like unto him. If you lay down with dogs, you get up with fleas, right? Birds of a feather flock together. If you hang around wicked niggas, you're going to become wicked, man. If you hang around somebody that's wicked more times, you're gonna uh, you're gonna pick up their ways and they get they pick up your ways, man. Yeah, so yeah, you all ready? Let's see here. Yeah, that's dope. Venom is the black symbiote. Like getting gum in your ass, right? Yeah, this person, Brianna Robinson, you women just just go away. The ones of you that you know. You new people, you you women that are, uh, you rebellious women, go away. We don't need you. We ain't looking for you. Nobody's paying you any attention. Goodbye. Boy, bye. <laughs> Girl, bye. Yeah, like getting gum in your hair, bro. Yep. And if you get gum in your hair, you ever fell asleep as a kid, and you was chewing gum, and then you woke up and it was stuck in your hair, you couldn't get that shit out. You had to clip the damn gum out of your hair, man. Right? That's what it's like. That's what wickedness is like. It's going to beguile you. It's going to beguile you. It's going to alter your understanding. Let's read that again. He that touches pitch shall be defiled therewith, and he that have fellowship with a proud man shall be like unto him. You have fellowship with a wicked nigga. You have fellowship with, uh, uh, um, what's the word? If you have concord with wickedness, then you're going to start to become wickedness. It's going to alter your understanding. And that's just plain and simple. And it's throughout the scriptures. And I see brothers is, you know, getting the scripts. And we've been warned not to be like this world. Not to be like this world. Not to be around these in, these people. We're supposed to be separate, right? And Bryce, you put up at Jacob and I love you. So what, what's, why, why you put that up, bro? Why you putting that up? <laughs> I want to be I want to be part of the part of the chat. Okay. Uh, let's see here. This is Jim S. Tazakai Yahweh. Ecclesiastes 12 and 14, so one that goeth to a sinner and is defiled with him and his sins, who will pity? That's right. If you be hanging out with sinners and then you get defiled with their sins, ain't nobody going to pity you. Let's, if we actually, brother, can you put up the other scriptures to go with that? Let's put up the, you know, maybe the first, uh, verse 13 and 12, maybe. Yeah, Galatians, Shalom Israel 7, 7, 7, Galatians 5 and 9. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. You can't have 90%. We got 90% true. We ain't got 100. Then you ain't got nothing. See? You got to have 100. You have a shot. got 100% true. The most high got 100% true, man. The Holy Spirit don't come upon you and give you some of the truth. 
Yeah, see, the Holy Spirit came on me last Tuesday. And I, he gave me 90% truth. And he said he's going to come back and give me the rest next week. No, 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 no. It's ridiculous. People don't even understand some of the erroneous, dumb phrases that they that they say out of their mouths. No, nobody got 100%. Yeah, shut up. Shut up. There it is. So this is uh, GMS Tazakai Yehawada, Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Who would pity a charmer that is bitten with a serpent or any such as come nigh wild beasts? So one that goeth to a sinner and is defiled with him in his sins, who will pity? And there's another scripture that says, let me get it real quick here, right? Because the Most High warns us about being around negative, wicked influences. And we ain't trying to say we better than nobody. Not like, you know, these, these, these proud Israelites, they're steady doing wickedness and then acting like they're all that because they're on a panel or they're getting money some type of way. That don't make you better than nobody because you're getting paper. It doesn't matter. Defiled ass, dirty money. Slutty money. Okay, so this is a... Uh, because the brother made, you know, he put the scripture up and I, I thought of a precept. Because the Most High tells us that we don't supposed to become defiled with, in, with other people's wickedness, man. Come on, thing. This thing is taking its time. This is 1 Timothy 5.22. It says, lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partaker of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure. Stay away from getting involved in other people's wickedness. Try to keep wickedness away from you as much as possible because Jake thinks you're going to come into the truth and you're going to do it your way. You're going to still, you're going to be a Hebrew Israelite. You're going to go around your friend. And then Jake loves to make excuses. You'll say you go around your friends from the hood because you're trying to convert them and you ain't even trying to convert them. You're just hanging around them because you still feel comfortable being around niggas, man. If you're in the truth, you should not be comfortable being around niggas. Why are you talking about your people? They ain't our people doing wickedness. Uh, pants hanging off your ass, right? Thieving nigga is not related to us. You ain't related to us. A raggedy, no good nigga woman, you ain't related to us. If you ain't trying to walk after the ways of truth, we do not want to know you. Shalom. If you ain't trying to be about the ways of truth, we don't want to know you. Period. It ain't nothing wrong with saying that. The Lord said, be ye separate, right? Didn't we? The brother put it up. Be ye holy for I am holy. Holy don't mean you are extra clean and pure. You don't do nothing wrong. You just walk around wearing white. It's your ways and your actions. Being set aside, being set apart from the ways of the world, right? When the world is doing one thing, you're doing another, for the most part. 1 Timothy 5, 22, lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partaker of other men's sins, keep thyself pure. And as I said in another video, even in the truth, man, sometimes you'll have a wicked nigga amongst the camps. He'll get kicked out, and then his friends, you, a click. You got to be careful of clicks. Don't be getting involved in no click. When nigga do wickedness, you ain't my brother. If you get kicked out of the camp, that's the most high separating you to be analyzed for a purpose. Don't expect me to go with you. Come on, brother, I'm by myself. You guess what? The Lord separated you for a reason, man. You're unclean for a while. Brothers got to look at that and be like, you know, every time I seen Jake try to follow a guy that got kicked out, because that's my brother. You know, I don't agree with the judgment. Well, guess what? You wicked too. You got checkmated by the Lord, man. That's how the most high operate. He don't do everything at once. He do things little bit by little bit. That's Esau try to be like him. All right, now. He's all trying to be like the Lord, man. He's trying to do things gradually. The Most High be always doing chess moves. You thinking he's doing one thing, he doing another. You think the Lord just doing one thing, he doing ten things, a thousand things at once. That's how the Lord get down. That's why he's undefeated, man. He's undefeated. This is Daniel 12. Listen. Daniel 12 and verse... Hold tight. Daniel 12 and verse 10. It says, many shall be purified and made white and tried. So you right there, the Israelites, they're white. They're really white people. Shut up. Nobody white in the scriptures, man. Okay? <laughs> Unless you white as snow. Leprous white as snow, which really is just red. You're being, you know, you're being without your pigment. No, the scripture said here, many shall be purified and made white and tried. Made white by what? The words of truth. Right? You're being purified by the words of truth. By the the, uh, uh, the fire that you go through, because the Most High cleanses us through these. You know, that we're gonna be tried, and um, how's it? Zechariah thirteen and nine, we shall be uh, uh, tried as the gold in the fire. Right? Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Why can they not understand? I'm gonna give you the scripture why. 
We already read it in um, Wisdom of Solomon, but here's another one. This is Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1, right? Listen to how, what it said here. Verse 1, love righteousness, ye that be judges of the earth. Think of the Lord with a good heart, and in simplicity of heart, seek him. Like we always tell you, the truth is a simple thing. It ain't no difficult, extra deep, metaphysical, biological, geometrical nothing. Jake try to be deep. That's why you always fall off the deep end. Because your ass trying to be deep. It said it right here. And in simplicity of heart, seek him. Do right and wrong. You got two choices, right? You want to do the right thing, the most high going to be with you. You want to do the wrong thing, the Lord ain't going to deal with you. For he will be found of them that tempt him not. Did you just hear that? He will be found of them that tempt him not. And showeth himself unto such as do not distrust him. You got to trust the most high. And if you trust the most high, you got to do things that don't seem like they're going to benefit you that much right now, right? But it's about the future with the Lord. It ain't always about just right now. For he will be found of them that tempt him not, and show of himself unto such as do not distrust him. For froward thoughts separate from the most high. You hear that? Froward thoughts. And the brother, if you want to look up the word froward, you can do it. I can do it quick. Froward thoughts. It says, for froward thoughts separate from the most high that means he ain't dealing with you if you separate from the most high that is he like you know is he your friend no he's not look up frower it says whoo i gotta get this one frower habitually disposed to disobedience and opposition whoo you did you you automatically want to be a demon you want to be you want to be disobedient to the lord if you frower man if you have a frower thoughts like for example, oftentimes you hear these stories, and I've seen it with my own eyes. You come across these other Israelite groups, and they'll be a woman. Like whenever I had, uh, and I don't really like to speak on it that much, but I, when I had when I had an Israelite wife, she would make friends with these other women from these Israelite congregations, and there will always be an Israelite woman who's trying to get around the scriptures. She in a relationship with a dude. She ain't want to be with him no more. She trying to figure out is there a way, is there a loophole in the scriptures? She can leave this guy and get with another brother. She's trying to be disobedient. That's, and that's what a lot of these women do, man. And even Jake's do it. Men do it. They try to find ways around what's written. You can't find nothing way around what's written. You are froward if you're trying to find a way around what's written of the Lord. And more times, you have Israelite women trying to do that. They try to, they don't like when you be with one man in the truth, that's all you're supposed to be with. They don't like that. They like to be able to leave him and go be with another guy. They try to find loopholes and errors. They keep asking different Israelites to break that down to them so they can find a way out. They think it's a loophole to get them out of it. That's why many of them leave the truth and then they make these videos. I'm no longer a Hebrew Israelite. Then your ass just about to get baked by the Lord. He ain't gonna give you no, no out. For fraud thoughts separate from the Most High and his power when it is tried reproveth the unwise. Here's the point. For into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter. What? Yeah. Wisdom shall not enter. If you got a malicious soul, you being wicked, the Most High is not going to give you his deep mysteries. It's just not going to do it. And Jake be always trying to one up the Lord, to try to one up the prophets by going to them other books. Jake, you got Israelites out there that said that the Book of Mormon, <laughs> they're reading out of the Book of Mormon because they're trying to be deep, man. The Book of Mormon was written, you know, was brought by a damn Edomite. It's not part of the Holy Bible, but Jake still won't leave them other books alone because you're trying to one up the Lord, one up the Holy Spirit, and one up the prophets. It's not going to work. For into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. Do you hear the, 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 do you hear the, the uh, gravity on that? It said wisdom, won't, if you got a malicious soul, wisdom ain't going to come into you, right? Nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. So if you used to have a little wisdom, you came into the truth, you're doing everything the right way, then you start doing wickedness. What that, what's that mean? That wickedness is altering your understanding. You think you're in the truth, but you're not, right? Them demons is on you. That's what it is. Them, them seven other spirits come back and they inhabit you, and you're worse off than you were before, man. The most I don't go backwards, he go forward. You can't come in the truth and then get swept and garnished and all cleaned out. Then decide, well, you know, I kind of backslid a little. Because Jake loves to say that. He loves to use the terms that the Christians use. You backslid. If you 
If you fall, the scriptures say a just man falleth seven times and getteth up again. That's a fall. You don't go for an extended amount of time. They could leave and leave the truth for two years, then pop back up. Here I am. And you just as through as hell, man. Now you're gonna have isolated incidents in certain individuals that fell off or whatever, fell. I don't even like to use that term, that fell. And for whatever reason, the most high brought you back and he renewed his spirit in you. Yeah, that could conceivably happen, but it's not something that you're gonna see happen a lot. That's right, brother, Joseph Smith. And as the story goes, he said that the angel Moroni gave him that Book of Mormon on two golden plates, which is complete crap, complete crap. So let's finish this off. For into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. If you're doing a bunch of sins, you're not gonna have the wisdom. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding and will not abide with unrighteousness cometh in. Woo, that's heavy. If unrighteousness is in your dwelling, which is this body, and you used to have understanding, that means that the Most High is going to take, and they said in the scriptures, take away even that he has. You're not going to be able to maintain doing works of the Lord, stand in the right way, and you're steadily doing wickedness. If you're around a bunch of wickedness, I like to say it's going to jam your frequency, man. Wickedness is, is hey, we read several scriptures, and the brothers are putting up more on the comment board. We don't need to over-explain over it. It's right there. So back in Daniel 12 and, and 9, 10, many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly. And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And that goes even for if you started out wicked or you go back to being wicked. If you were doing the righteous works, you was in the truth. When people go back into the world, they don't continue to know the revelations of the Lord. People that fell out of the truth, you can go to them, and it's as if they was never in the truth, man. It's like a metamorphosis, like the most high sucks the truth right out of them because they've been altered. Their understanding got altered by wickedness. I could give you many examples. There was this brother that was teaching with us in Pittsburgh, and the brother was a pretty decent guy. We liked him, but we could see little things he was doing, you know. It was just, but, but when he fell off and went back and started messing with that weed again, that shit just consumed him. That was that, that, that venom. That venom got back on him, man. Venom got on him again, and he threw. And, ain't no, and nobody heard from this guy in, in, in years, man. But you know what? Hey, it is what it is. Ain't nothing you can do. Ain't nothing you can do to save him. I mean, if the most high want that man to be saved, and, and eventually he will be saved, but it ain't looking good. So I read here. This is Ecclesiastes 39 and verse 24. It says, As his ways are plain unto the holy, so are they stumbling blocks unto the wicked. If a person is wicked, they ain't going to be able to get the ways of the Lord, man. You're going to be looking at it. You can't judge right. You can't do nothing right. Because the Lord doesn't shut that down on you, right? As his ways are plain unto the holy, so are they stumbling blocks unto the wicked. And I can actually read up um, Ecclesiastes 39 and 23. As he had turned the waters into saltness, so shall the heathen inherit his wrath. As his ways are plain unto the holy, so are they stumbling blocks unto the wicked. And people are always tripping over the ways of the Lord, but that's because their ass is wicked. The, uh, the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. This is also Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You can't stay in a wicked state. And even if you come out of the wicked state and then you go back into it, hey, what you had, you're going to lose it. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of the mind. By the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of the Most High. It's plain, plain, plain. This is Ecclesiastes 21. And verse 1, my son, has thou sinned? Do so no more, but ask pardon for thy former sins. We all have sinned, right, and fallen short of the glory of the Most High. But we ask to pardon for those sins. The scriptures say you must repent and be ye converted. When you repent, you ask for forgiveness of your former sins. You put those things away, and then you convert to what's right, what's true. Go to the ways of the Lord and follow after that. And that's the pattern you got to stay on. You can't go outside of that. You can't, I'm going to commit a little bit. I'm going to, you know, I mean, of course, in these sinful, in this sinful flesh, we're going to commit sin. Don't, don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But that willful stuff that you do, that willful sin, that's what's going to take you down. You know, 
You know, I, well, I was trying, but I just had to like the new part. I couldn't help it. You know, that's why when them things, you go back to something, it comes upon you harder. Like, I'll use myself as an example. I ain't smoked no weed. I ain't touched that stuff in years. It's been 12 years plus since I touched. Now, if I was to go back now and fire up a blunt, man, them damn evil spirits would probably jump all over me, man. It'd be harder to get out. That's that, 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 that black goo. That black goop, which is sin, will cover you again. Then you become venomous, like venom. It says, flee from sin as from the face of a serpent. The Most High uh, uh, commands us to flee from sin as from the face of a serpent. If you're walking through a path one day, you know, enjoying the nature trail, and then you see a big-ass snake jump out, you will break your neck to get away from it. That's how the Lord said we're supposed to get away from sin. He says that flee from sin as from the face of a serpent. For if thou comest too near it, it will bite thee. The teeth thereof are as the teeth of a lion slain the souls of men. How does your soul get slain when it's, when it's an inanimate object, when it's abstract? The soul is not physical, right? It's not physical. So it's telling you that wickedness will bring you down, man. It will bring you down. At the end of the day, the truth is always about one and two things, man. Good as opposed to evil. Trying to do the right thing. Trying to be good people. Jake thinks that the truth is all about it. I got my fridges. I got the ZZs. I got the ram's horn. I got my olive oil. No. At the end of the day, he is a Judas one inwardly, not outwardly. Right? It's all about cleaning up. What's going to cleanse you? This right here. You got to do what's in this. And I'm not saying don't do those other things. But you, many Israelites are too caught up in the outward show. On the outside, you're like unto whited sepulchres, but inwardly, you're like dead men's bones. Right? That's what it's all about. At the end of the day, trying to do the right thing. Trying to do the right thing. And keeping all the laws ain't going to save you either. You got to have faith. Flee from sin is from the face of a serpent. For if thou comest too near it, it will bite thee. The teeth thereof are as the teeth of a lion slaying the souls of men. Listen, all iniquity. Not some of the sins, all iniquity is as a two-edged sword. The wound world cannot be healed. See it? Plain. Plain. To terrify and do wrong will waste riches. Thus the house of proud men shall be made desolate. Don't need a whole lot of breaking down. It's easy to understand that. Let's get some off the comment board and then we'll shut this down. Let's see what brothers got. I saw a lot of great scriptures flying there. The water for you brothers being patient. Uh, whoo, Parthon Banya Howder, great. This is uh, Isaiah 57 and 15. It says, For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity. I love that. The high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity. Why does it say high and lofty? Because the most high is proud? No, because he's up on another level, man. He's righteous. Righteousness is on another level than, than wickedness. Right? For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabited eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. You gotta be contrite ones, man. You can't be proud, you know? And people and don't mistake boldness for pride. You see? The most high said in the scriptures, the righteous are bold as lions. If you know you got the truth, you're gonna be you're gonna be bold. It's just like when you're about to take an exam or a test, and you stay up and you study and you cram for it and you practice and you know when you go in and get the answers. When you take the test the next day, you bold. You're like, I ain't worried about this test. I got this. You don't go, I don't oh, know, man. I don't know, man. When you're not prepared, that's what's bring that 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 timidness. And we ain't timid. We we know we bold in the Lord. This is Great Millstone Daily Bread, four eleven, which is Great Millstone Philadelphia. 1 Corinthians 12, 25, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And if a man also, it's like it, that, you know, and that's a great scripture. No schism in the body, right? You can't have somebody being, uh, the, all the brothers trying to do the right thing, and this one guy trying to do something different. That's why when people come, we, we, we rebuke. We rebuke out of love. This is Virgin Island Straight Gate, Proverbs 1 and 10. My son... If sinners entice thee, 
Consent thou not. I love that. That's that's a well placed, beautiful scripture. My son, if sinners entice thee, what does it say? Consent thou not. Your friends, you hear you is in the truth. Friend and them drop by the house unexpectedly. They know you in the truth, but they gonna come on, man. You can still go out with us. The whole car is full of weed smoke. Why you gonna get in it? Why you gonna go hang out with them? You know what they're going to do. They're going to shoot dice on the corner. They're going to do nigga shit. They're going to do, oh, you don't like the word nigga. They're going to do Negro black people things. And you don't want nothing to do with that, man. And when you get in trouble, you'll be saying, man, I, I know I should have stayed home and studied tonight. I know I should have stayed home and made a video instead. Don't go out with the two thirds. You don't got no use for them anymore. Don't be afraid to say, I can't do that anymore. That's the bottom line, man. And I don't know, you know, why the Lord got me saying this, but I'm saying it. Maybe somebody out there dealing with that. Don't get caught up in that you being wicked if your family members come around that's not in the truth and they want you to hang out and you don't want to hang out. Don't get caught up in it, man. You are of a different sort now. Your life is of a different fashion. Because if you hang around them and they do wickedness, you're going to start to get, your understanding is going to be, become altered. That's why I always get mad at them jakes that go around the Christians and you... Here you is, you think you know the scriptures, and then you go there, and then they tell you, when you say the law was done away with, then they tell you that the law, the handwriting, the ordinances was hung on the cross, and you come back and ask us, and then we wind up fussing at you, because you don't understand enough. So why are you going around and trying to act like you know the scriptures then, man? You haven't watched enough videos, you haven't studied enough to understand and know. The precepts all over the Bible tell you that the law is not done away with. Why when the Christians hit you with that, you start thinking, well, you know what, it do make sense. It's because... That wickedness is, is, is starting to alter your understanding, man. Which really, you never had it. My son, if, if, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lie, lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privately for the innocent without cause. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path, for their feet run to evil. And make haste to shed blood. That's fire, man. That, that's, that's a bad scripture, brother. The water. That's bad. Great millstone, daily bread. 2 Timothy 2 and 5. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. You got to strive. You got to try. Put forth effort. The truth is a fight. And that damn black goop that dripped on, on Spider-Man, that venom shit, it's, it's coming. It's after you. It want to get on you a little bit first, then it's going to spread. Then you're going to be out of the truth, asking us what you should do. And, then, and hey, I don't have time. You know what I mean? We trying to do all we can do. Lord willing. This is Jim S. Tazakai Yahweh, Hebrews 10, 26. For if we sin willfully, after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Please, Jake, do not split hairs on that. Don't come and ask me if it was your choice, you know, to, I don't know, to do something. To take the tag off the mattress and they say it's against the law. Does that mean the most high going to destroy you now? Come on, man. Grow up. Right? Grow up. Parathon Banya Howard, 2nd Ezra 16, 77. Woe be unto them that are bound with their sins and covered with their iniquities, like as a field is covered over with bushes and a path thereof covered with thorns that no man may travel through. It is left undressed and is cast into the fire to be consumed therewith. You see that? If you get covered over with your sins and iniquities, it's going to take you, man. The greater part of a man is what he is, right? And I don't know where I heard that. Yet. But, but whatever, the greater thing, the greater part of a man is, is what you are, man. If you tell a lie, you in the truth. Here it is, you in the truth. And you always lying to people. You in the truth, but you just tell a lie. Because that, that spirit, get on, Jake. That's, that lying spirit, you don't have to be dishonest with really with anybody. Now, don't get me wrong. At the end of the day, you can you will be deceptive to cover the truth, you know what I mean? Like Jake trying to figure out where you going to teach at. You know this nigga going to bring a bunch of folly. And he asks you, going to be at your normal spot? And you say, nah, we're going to be at a different spot. That, that's different. You're using, you're using gal to get out of a bad situation. We ain't talking about like that. I'm talking about like if here it is, you in the truth. And you got a cousin that's asking you to come over to the house or to do this or do that. You keep saying you're going to come. Don't say you're going to come. Just say you ain't coming. You don't have to keep lying to niggas. Tell them you don't want to be. You don't want to come to the cookout. Why, cuz? Why you don't want to come? All the family want to see you. Because right now, the current walk that I'm taking right now, it, it, you don't even have to give me an explanation. Just say you don't want to come. You know? Sometimes you just have to be honest, man. You know? 
You don't want to come to the cookout. You don't want to smell, even though you don't eat the pork. See that? Jay can tell you, see, we cooking pork on the grill, but I'll throw you a burger on. Come on, man. Don't, sub don't subject yourself to that. Subject yourself to that. I don't want to come over to the house with my family and smell chitlins. I'm over there. I'm not going to eat the chitlins, but you think I want to smell them? I don't want to smell them. I don't want to see y'all. I don't want to hear the stupid celebration. I don't want to be a part of it. And every band is different. So, you know, you don't have to do what I do. I'm just I'm just saying. So this is also, um, yeah, Toronto's hopefully let Proverbs 24, 50. It says, oh, Proverbs, uh, Proverbs 24 and 5. A wise man is strong, yeah, a man of knowledge increases strength. Right, stay in this book. Keep building up, right? Keep watching the videos. Implement what you hear, brothers, you know, the, the scripture that's coming out. You know, write down, take notes. That's why you need to take notes so that you learn. That's how you learn. You learn through repetition, like El Apostle Gabar constantly says. We learn through repetition, right? This is Parathon Banya Howard of Psalms 1 and 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. Blessed is the man that walketh after, after the counsel of the Most High, right? That walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, should I say. This is, uh, that's right, brother, it's just not worth it. Let's see what else we got. Uh, Judah Israel, Shalom, brother. I saw you posting away. You know, I'm gonna read this one. First Corinthians 10 21. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Stop right there. <laughs> you can't drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Come on, man. How many of us can mix water with liquor and not feel the effects of the booze? You can't do it. You can't drink from the cup of the Lord and from the cup of devils. You gotta make your mind up. All right? Which really has got to be put in your spirit, you know. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. I'm a Hebrew Israelite, but I celebrate my born day. Your born day. It's, ain't that the same thing as birthday, my nigga? It is. Why are you trying to do that? You're trying to put a spin on it so you can be a Hebrew Israelite to celebrate his birthday, man. It's ridiculous. And, you, and I've seen that. I've seen it. What else we got? I'm going to shut this down pretty quick. This is uh, GMS Howard Carr, Psalms 119 and 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. This is the cleanser right here. It's going to cleanse your way. That's the only thing. If you're doing other things, you're getting involved in wickedness, you're getting that dirty goop all over you again, it's going gonna, it's gonna to alter your understanding. And you're going to be through. You're going to be through. This is uh, Shalom Israel 777, 1 Corinthians 5 and 6. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven, leaven the whole lump, that black goop get on you, that shit gonna spread. Y'all saw the movie? Purge out therefore the old leaven. It didn't say keep a little piece of the old leaven. It said purge it out. Get rid of it. Purge out therefore the old leaven that ye may be a new lump as ye are unleavened. Even how shall our Passover is sacrificed for us? That's fire. That's fire, bro. Great. Uh, this is Toronto's hopefully let. Isaiah 116. Wash you. How do we wash? We just read it. Psalms 119 and 9. The brother put it up. Wash you. Make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings for before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. You got to stop doing wickedness. Don't go back into it. Don't get defiled with it. Right? That's fire. Another great one. Uh, this is Judah Israel. Ephesians 5 and 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of the Most High upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Don't be with them. They're doing wickedness over there. Why are you trying to be with them? It's way better over here on this other side, man. We're trying to follow after the ways of the Lord. Way better. Better, better, better. Like that, <laughs> that girl that had the Tourette's. It's way better, brothers. Y'all know it. It goes on. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now... You were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the world. Walk as children of light. Fire. Fire, brother. 
Walk as children of the light. This is another nice one. Samakama. I think that's the brother in Puerto Rico. Right? James 4 and 8. Draw nigh to the Most High, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. And how you get cleansed, how you get purified, right here, man. Right here. That's, that's beautiful. Excellent, really. All these scriptures. What is, where are these scriptures coming from like that? That's the spirit feeding us through each other, man. That's dope. This is Ephesians 4.17 from Great Millstone Daily Bread. Ephesians 4.17. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk no, so like it, walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Don't be proud. Don't be puffed up. You know? Uh, verse 18. Having the understanding darkened. Wait a minute. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. You mean your, your understanding can be darkened? Yeah, it can be. You can get launched into outer darkness from the table of truth. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of the Most High through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. That's he. That's dope. Great stuff. Great stuff, brothers. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, man, a lot of good scripts. Y'all, y'all, y'all loading it down. This is, uh, yeah, this is Jim Messer, Matthew, I from your howard. First Timothy 4, 14. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. Uh, take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. You heard that? Jake loved to come into the truth and try to change the doctrine. Then he tried to act like they thought of it. You know, like the, like, like the apostles was just holding the truth till they showed up. Then they go, I take over from here, apostles. I got it. No, that ain't how things work. It says, take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine that was established for you came alone. Continue in them, for in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. That's bad. Bad old scriptures. Excellent stuff. I'm impressed. I'm impressed, brothers. <laughs> now, I want to say when I uh if I didn't take it off already, I did already. That wisdom of Solomon chapter one, you should go read that whole chapter because there were some other scriptures in there that I did not read that were excellent. Read that whole chapter. I'm gonna read one or two more, then I'm gonna shut it down. This is uh Woo! Pillars of Benjamin. Man, Pillars of Benjamin, Psalms 101 and 3. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave unto me. And again, did that black tar goop that got on Spider-Man, that got on Peter Parker, that got on that guy and spread until he became venom, that shit killed him. What happened? That, that goop shit made him. Didn't he jump off the building in the end? I think he did. That black stuff took him down. He was, that guy, he was empowered by that black goop. So when he... Because when they left him, he became weak. He became normal again. So when that black goop got, I don't know if it, if it got thrown off the building, he jumped to try to be a part of it. I, what happened? I think uh, I think Green Goblin threw a pumpkin bomb or something, and it, that green goop grabbed it. Didn't it, something like that happen? That black goop grabbed the pumpkin bomb, and then the dude got pulled back in, and he wound up exploding, man. But see, sin can feel powerful. Wickedness can feel powerful, man. You know? It's invigorating. Some, I, mean, I, I, I can say that through a testimony because I remember when I used to be out there in the world doing shit. You're smoking a blunt, riding down the street, doing whatever you're doing. That shit is invigorating. You're like, yes, I'm alive. Coming into the truth can sometimes feel boring. Right? We know that. We experience that. You feel like you hit the wall. Sometimes you're like, I watch so many videos. I'm tired. My mind needs to rest. Well, there's, there's avenues. The most I made drink. Drink you some, some wine. This is water. Drink you some wine. Right? Drinking some strong drink. Sometimes you do need a break. I like it. Let me plug this uh, battery up. Sometimes you do need a break. Ain't nothing wrong with that. And I don't mean a break from the truth. You just need a break from your normal thing that you've been doing. You've been studying so much. You've been cramming. You've been trying to, you know, making all these lessons. I make so many lessons. I get, you know, you, you don't get burned out, but you feel that, you know, you feel a little burned out. You can get that burned out feeling. But guess what? Sometimes you wake up and you don't have, you don't feel the spirit to do a lesson right then. And you might feel bad for a day or two. 
Man, you go out there and start walking and looking at nature, looking at you know things that the Most High made. Before you know it, that fire get back on you, and you be ready to roll again, man. Yup, you be ready to roll again in no time. So many great scriptures, so many great scriptures, brothers. This is a uh, Jim S. Amoth, your eyes from your howder, Colossians three and eight. But now, ye also put off all these. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. So I tell you guys are going to get stabbed. You're cursing. You're saying bad language. Shut up. Shut your ass up. Shut up. There's no scripture that condemns men for using harsh language. Harsh language always exists. You even got Israelites that say, you're using them Gentile cousin words. Jake think that when we was back in the Holy Land, we were the most clean, righteous people. Well, if that was the case, why did we wind up under the curses? Why the Most High cast us out of the Holy Land? We got exiled. Why? We haven't known true righteousness. Harsh language is, I mean, don't get me wrong. It ain't always the best thing to do. But there's no scripture that says, Thou shalt speak only these words, man. Right? How shall I say that? The things that come out of the heart of the man are the things that defile him. And I'm not sitting here trying to um, excuse or... You know, say that it's okay to just go crazy and just cuss everybody out. No, you just you have your moments. You pick your spots, man. That's all. Going on and put on Salakia. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. You put off the old man with his deeds, right? And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge. What? Which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. You can't, you can't be you. You can't be the Hebrew is like version of you. You got to be the new version of the old you, man. You got to be a new creation, should I say. A new creature. You got to be transformed. You can't stay you. They love to come into the troop and bring all them damn, you know, bring all that damn baggage from the front of the world. I ain't going to bury my gifts. If your gifts make you do things like the people in the world do, you can't use it for that. You got to learn how to flip it, man. See? You just got to learn how to flip it. If you was a like me, I, th I thought I wanted to be on radio and have announced, you know, be announced and do all this different stuff with my voice. Well, I still do that. I got a clear reading voice. The most high, I was an English major. I could spell good. Guess what? I use those things now to clearly bring out scriptures and lessons that the elect can hear. That's it. I used to work in the, be in the studio trying to make beats, rap, do all that. Now, I put together same type, of, like I said in the other video, same type of energy. Today I was doing doing videos. You can do post production. You get into it, man. You just get into it. Those are the things you use for the ministry. You take those gifts that the Lord gave you and you flip them for the ministry. You don't try to stay in wickedness, try to be the old you and still being in the truth. You can't do it, man. You got to figure out a way to take the gifts that Most High gave you and use them for righteousness' sake, right? Use your power for good, not for evil. Like the old saying goes. A lot of great scriptures, brother. This is Arrows of Indignation, Shalom, brother. Proverbs 6, 18, and heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet to be swift in the running in the evil. And that goes with, you know, another, it says, uh, these six things that the Lord hate. This is, uh, hold on. Judah, Akia 4, Matthew 6, 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve the Most High and Mammon. And Mammon is the God of money. You can't serve two masters. Just like the Lord said, man. You can't, uh, damn, I had it and I lost it. You can't be being double-minded, basically, right? You can't You can't serve two masters. Oh, yeah, the Lord said in uh, John chapter 8, he said, Ye do that which you have heard with your father, and I do that which I have seen with my father. You got one or two spirits that you follow after. Either you follow the spirit of righteousness or the spirit of wickedness. You can't have both. If you're a righteous person and you're doing 10% wickedness, guess what? The whole, like the brother put the scriptures up. You got to purge out that old leaven. A little leaven, leaven at the whole love, a little wickedness is going to overcome you. You can't let that, that stuff in. You got to get it out of you to the best of your ability. A lot of great scripts. Don't be mad at me if I don't get to you, brothers, man, because a lot of brothers posting a lot of great scripts, all right? I'm going to go ahead and shut it down. I'll read one or two more. This is, uh, man, I'm going to want to buy it. 2 Corinthians 5, 16, Wherefore, henceforth, know ye, know we, no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Hamashiach after the flesh, yet now henceforth, know we him no more. 
Therefore, if any man be made in, Salakia, therefore, if any man be in a Mashiach, he is a new creature. Pookie is dead. Ray Ray dead. Fred, he gone. Okay? Now it's Brother Ariyah. Brother Ariala. Right? Brother Yasha Wan. Right? You ain't Johnny no more from the block. That's not you anymore. Even though people may still call you that. No. Now your brother Azrael. That's who you are, man. He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And all things are of the Most High, who hath reconciled us to himself by Yahweh Shah Mashiach, and hath given, us, given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Look up the word reconciliation and see what it means. Being reconciled. If you had a woman you was apart for a long time, and you missed that woman, and one day y'all became reconciled, that means she took you back. Y'all got back together, should I say. Y'all reconciled. That's what the Lord did for his people. We was cut off. We was in exile. We was gone. Yahweh Shai came down on the cross to reconcile us back. That's why the stupid Christians can't understand that, man. The, 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 the Bible was never set up so you could come into it. It's so the most high people, the Israelites, the Gentile foreigners scattered into the earth, and the Jews from the Holy Land could be reconciled back to the Father. That's it. You can't get it too bad. That's right, brother. Pookie is dead. <laughs> Pookie is dead. I'm going to read a little more of this. It says, uh, To wit that the Most High was in Hamashiach, reconciling the world unto himself. See, right there it says the world. The world of Israel. Demons. Cosmos. To wit the Most High was in Hamashiach, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation, only made available by the blood of the precious Savior. That's the only way. You can't get to the Most High without his son. You can't do it. Jake love to try to uh, go according to their own righteousness. You ain't, you ain't got no righteousness. So we're going to shut it down, brothers. Um, whew, my favorite. One of my favorites. Nathan Yahweh Psalms 125 and 3. For the wicked, for the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands into iniquity. The evil can't do nothing to you until you start going and getting getting involved with it. Then that filthy black goop is going to spread all over you. Before you know it, you're going to be outside the truth. Trying to t trying to ask brothers what you should do. We're going to say, we, we, I can't do nothing for you, man. You know? We just prophesy to you, give you the words, but man, hey. Whew, that's it, brothers. I'm exhausted now. All right? The spiritual energy, we burning that oil. You know, we're trying to do the best we can do to bring it out. And, and again, don't be slighted, you brothers out there, that um, I didn't read a scripture from you, all right? It's just so many on the comment board. It's overwhelming. So it is what it is, all right? The water, everybody, for joining, for listening, for posting your scriptures. And Lord willing, it was edifying. All praise to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakudash. Double honor to the apostles and elders. A great millstone. Shalom to the hopefully elect. We'll see you again soon with another lesson. This has been Beware of Wickedness. It will alter your understanding. We'll see you again soon, Lord willing. All right, shalom.